Welcome to Athens. This is the Choragic Monument of Lysocrates, built as a pedestal for a music prize in 335 BC. Placa, Athens, you, me, the cats. So this was in August 2018. I was staying at Athens Studio in Placa District and the first thing I did was have a nap and then I went for a walk. This is Hadrian's Arch, built in 131 AD to honour the Roman Emperor Hadrian. It represents a gateway between the future and the past, one side being dedicated to Hadrian and the other side to Theseus. Oh. That is the Temple of Olympian Zeus, completed in the time of Hadrian, after being under construction for 600 years. As you can tell, I made it to Athens. I have one night in the hostel, and then I'm starting a top deck tomorrow afternoon. And I'll have two nights in my hotel. And I'm enjoying Athens. There's random shit everywhere. This is Zappian Hall, which was created as an exhibition hall to host the modern Olympics. A rich guy named Evangelist Zappus dedicated his entire life savings to reigniting the ancient tradition of the Olympic Games as an international event. He hosted his own games in 1859. After he died in 1865, he left behind his fortune to create the International Olympic Committee, which held the first actual Olympic Games in 1896. I'm getting wet. <laughs> is that a fucking like, turned on. Why is that? Flooded the whole park. <laughs> this is Syntagma Square. It has impeccable vibes. Underneath the square is Syntagma Metro, which is one of the busiest transport hubs in the country. From there, you just walk down the hill into the shopping district of Monastiraki. Coming up is the Holy Metropolitan Cathedral of the Annunciation. The first stone was laid by King Otto and his wife Amalia on Christmas Day in 1842. Before Greece gained independence, it was ruled under the Ottoman Empire, which was Muslim, so most of the churches here were built within the last 200 years. And they are soap. <laughs> I paid this man seven euros to make me a bracelet with my name on it, made out of wire. Um, the hostel I was staying in was in an amazing spot. It's called Athens Studios. And I met a girl there named Bethany that night. So we went out to the rooftop bar that's attached to the hostel. I think it's called Athens Sports Bar. That is the moon rising. That is Lickavettis Hill. And that is the Acropolis. That's my drink. Good morning. I'm not wearing any sunscreen, so I've got to do these ones for my little scar. Today I want to climb Lickavettis. There's a funicular. So I'm going to ride that up to the top of the mountain. Hopefully, have a good view of Athens. I didn't realize that Greece is in a different time zone to the Balkans. So I'm, I almost missed free breakfast. It's good I found that out now because I might have almost missed the top deck. And until then, I'm just gonna walk around, chill out, try to wear myself out a bit, see some stuff that we're not gonna see tomorrow. Coming up is the Panathenaic Stadium, the only stadium in the entire world built of marble, completed in 144 AD. And every year the Olympic flame is lit on Mount Olympus and does a relay marathon of the country before coming here. I climbed the hill to the funicular for Mount Lycabettus. I think it's Lycabettus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
at the top of the hill is a chapel of St. George and a bell tower. It's all very small and quaint. And the name Lacobetus means the hill walked by wolves. There's an amphitheater where some of the greatest rock musicians of the 50s and 80s have howled at the moon. And I went to the restaurant and had the most amazing meal moussaka and greek salad this is the church of saint nicholas rangivas built in the 11th century the bell in this church was rung when greece declared independence from the ottomans in 1821 and then again when athens was liberated from the nazis in 1944. then i went and checked into candia best western to begin my top deck and i met my roommate Gemma. Uh, we all went out for dinner and our focus was on just getting to know each other so i don't have any footage the next day we were taken on a tour of arapagus hill by our tour manager panos that's him he's lovely this is a very popular free spot but such a it's such a letdown compared to if we had actually gone to the acropolis so i was like i'm gonna go after tour the changing of the guard is happening here on the monument of the unknown soldier uh, but it's just a bunch of slow dance moves on a grave so i'm going to talk about the statue of lord byron everybody knows the 18th century poet and celebrity with a reputation for being moody and emo and violent and slutty um, but what i didn't know is that byron very vocally supported greek independence he spent a huge amount of his own inheritance to build ships and assemble armies to support the war effort and he was even going to fight in the war himself uh, but whoops lord byron got a fever which at first i was like a likely story but no he got a fever the doctors put leeches on him and he fucking died <laughs> it's not funny but it is though he was 36 which is the same age as marilyn so it is tragic you know it's very byronic <laughs> in his poetry he wrote the isles of greece the isles of greece where burning sappho loved and sung where grew the arts of war and peace where delos rose and phoebus sprung eternal summer gilds them yet but all except their sun is set we had a little bit of free time to go shopping in Monastiraki and we got gelato. I think I got black sesame flavor. Uh, then we got on a bus to Cape Sunyon where we had lunch at a salad buffet by the beach. I recall the food being remarkably average. Then we went for a swim in the ocean and I experienced one of the most magical moments of my young life. I was swimming on my own about 30 meters from shore and I stumbled onto a little rocky reef and found myself surrounded by tiny little fishes. The water was so crystal clear that I could see all the way to the bottom and I just, I just felt like so much peace and so much thankfulness for my body. Like sometimes I, sometimes I hate my body but how can I hate my body when it got me into this position? <laughs> G'day! What up? We're up. We're this up here. Vlog. This is yeah. Welcome <laughs> back to my channel. Hi guys. Um, this it's is us. just the temple. Um, it was built in 440, <laughs> 440 BC, Poseidon's temple. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Um, it was destroyed naturally by the Persians. Oh, and naturally now. by the Persians. And, and, that. and um, that's it. And there's loads of marble. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we're not allowed to stand on the marble. You can't stand on the marble. You know that, like, when your job is literally like, yeah, she's just, just going to stand on the marble. I don't think she's getting paid for that. <laughs> she just she's just it. passionate. <laughs> Athens was a port town and the prosperity of ancient Greece depended on maritime trade so naturally the people who worshipped Poseidon were very rich aristocratic traders and it was a military base as well as being a temple. We drove back to Athens which took about an hour and then we had an hour to get ready before we went out to dinner in Plaka. The food, below average, but they had unlimited refills of wine and this is the traditional Zorba dance I believe. I believe it has something to do with Zorba. I don't know where, the, where, where I got the word Zorba from. And then they got my friend Deborah standing on a shot glass. They spun her around. <laughs> We get off the bus, we remember to pick everything from the bus. 
We got back to the hotel at 11 p.m. and we had to wake up again at 4.30 a.m. to make it to the ferry to Mykonos, which departed at 6 a.m. And if you can't tell, by the look on my face, I love boats. I love being on boats. I love driving boats. I love kayaking. This girl is 100% just excited to be on a boat. It's a five hour journey to Mykonos and I thought I would have trouble with seasickness, but it, was, it wasn't that bad. Like I felt a bit queasy, but I was still able to eat. Looking at the horizon and absorbing the parallax really helps. There was a cafe on the boat and there was also a random guy selling traditional honey nougat wafers for one euro each and like, it was the best nougat I've ever had in my life. <laughs> the wind was batshit insane. <laughs> And this is Billy and Alex, both gorgeous girls with the most intelligent wit. They were from Canberra. We drove to our hotel, which was in Plati Gyalos. Plati just means beach. This was the nicest hotel I stayed in throughout my entire trip. Hotel Patinos. My room was about 200 meters from the beach. This restaurant was attached to the hotel, so I guess you could say it was a resort and the restaurant had a pool. There was a lot of people on our tour, like these are all part of our top deck group. Um, I forget most of their names, <laughs> but there was about 35 people. Not many of them were loose units, like the vibe was much less about party, 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 unlike Kentucky. I think top decks are a bit more focused on just making things convenient and cheap and bloody hell did they do that for us. I think this tour was about $1,800, $1,900. We're in Mykonos. We arrived this afternoon. We're at the best hotel ever. I found this weird little crawl space. Super tiny. There's a little window. And I got in through this little crack. We caught a bus into town and then we walked to Little Venice by the windmills. And that's Little Venice over there, and this is the windmills behind us. Hello! Most of these were built by the Venetians in the 16th century to mill wheat. The Venetian Empire was very wealthy, with a capital in Venice, and dominated bits and pieces of this side of the Mediterranean from the year 1000 up until 1797 when Napoleon Bonaparte defeated them. So, in Montenegro, Croatia, Albania, Crete, and the islands of Greece, there's still evidence of their rule left behind in the form of buildings and also destruction. <laughs> they destroyed some things too. We're lost in Little Venice. How about you? Oh, so mighty. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> I can go back to where we were before, uh, yeah. like down where the water was. Yeah. It's, and the restaurant is right there. <laughs> So the next day we took an optional trip to Delos and the boys were all hung over and having a horrible time, both on the boat and standing around in the heat on the island. Um, I think one of the girls threw up at some point, but me and Gemma and Charlotte were all like perfectly fine. <laughs> we had a great time. That's Delos, ancient penises, here we come. Delos is considerably well preserved as far as ancient cities go. It was populated as early as 3500 BC as it was a crossroads in the middle of the Aegean. Uh, the bay was a great place to wait for the wind to die down and everything so it became like a multicultural hub with a Jewish synagogue and temples to Isis and Baal along with a theatre and a stadium and by the second century AD most merchant ships had gotten too big for the harbour so they favoured Mykonos instead 
and Delos was mostly abandoned apart from people taking care of the temples. Uh, but in the 8th century, it had to be completely abandoned because these water cisterns, which were the only water source, became infected with mosquitoes carrying malaria. Excuse me? It had a dick at one point. Like, all that's left is the ball size. I think that's fucking hilarious. I recall there being a cabinet full of the penises that had broken off of the statues and I don't know where my footage of that is. By the Renaissance they had figured out the genitals had to stay small so that they would stay on the sculpture <laughs> and not fall off. Used to be the sacred lake of Delos and it's now tree. I've had enough and it's time for dinner. This is the restaurant where the guy did the worm in a ring of fire and drank a shot off the ground. But do you think I have the footage of it? I think I deleted a bunch of stuff. Like I was like, oh no, I don't need this. <laughs> the next day we rented deck chairs on the beach for 10 euros each and you could order drinks and snacks from the waiters who would walk around. The sand is really weird, like it's coarse and like rocky. Thank you. <laughs> Where? We got driven to town for dinner and on this night we truly got so lit <laughs> in Mykonos because our tour was supposed to include two nights in Paros but because the boatmen did a strike which apparently they do every summer so clearly their conditions never improve um, we couldn't catch any boats and we had to stay in Mykonos two extra days which we actually did complain about at the time but can you really complain our plans had to change and we've actually been stuck on Mykonos for two extra nights uh, I'm not complaining. That's a lie. I did complain. <laughs> I 
on the last day in Mykonos I treated myself to a spa experience worth 50 euros which is still pretty decent considering I was wrapped in plastic like Laura Palmer and left alone for half an hour to enjoy the sensation of sweat dripping into my ear while being unable to lift my hands to move it. 10 out of 10. Did I ruin the shot? No. Never. I made the shot. So we're on our way to Santorini. Fun fact, Santorini used to be a volcano. So this is Ea, the most famous spot to photograph in all of Greece, especially at sunset. So, uh, surprise, two million people visit Santorini every year and we met a quarter of them. I think the average is like 10,000 visitors a day, so that kind of uh, is the experience, you know. So like, hello, here I am, I have a beautiful view. I also am a beautiful view, but like, I'm standing on a pile of rubbish and there's nothing to do here apart from talk to people and take photos. Take a photo of yourself, take a photo of the sun, take a photo of the city. But like, you know, it is a good view. It is beautiful. I am thankful. Who wanted a drink? I did. Oh, Thank you. Good morning! This morning we are hiking up a volcano. <laughs> yeah, just casually. When he said that was built by Swiss. Hi! Oh, no, we look up on <laughs> Bye losers! <laughs> Phoebe! <laughs> oh. Oh. oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> wow. I'm swearing in my Snapchat, thanks guys. Screamed after this, we died after this. I think. <laughs> 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 Who screams yeah. every time? Stop it's fine. Sorry. Charlotte! Well, maybe that is our pirate boat. Look at it! Once again, she's way too happy to be on a boat. She won't stop taking photos if it's, as if it's her fucking birthday. <laughs> Annoys the shit out of everyone who doesn't want to be on camera. Because who knows what I'm going to do with the footage. Maybe I'll sit on it for four years before I decide it's useful. Is it zoomed in? Yeah, it's mode. We're headed to the volcano at the centre of Santorini. The entire thing used to be a volcano. And what's left of it, the main part of the island, is actually the walls. Can we hike this volcano? We're not yeah. sure. Yeah, okay, yes. <laughs> Maybe. Ashley had an injured knee that she was advised not to do any hiking on, and I have fairly serious asthma whenever I exercise. CD. CD. I've done really well. They told us to go back. I'm proud of us. Yes, I'm proud of us too. 
but Panos said not to do this hike yeah. at all, and we're like, no, we can do it. I told you that back and we've we pulled on. We have. We are probably both about to pass out, <laughs> but we've pulled on. <laughs> The center part of the volcano is where the core still is, like it's dormant, but um, there's one little puff of sulfuric gas coming out of it. I'm a bit ashamed of this. These days I care a little bit more about animal rights and I wouldn't partake in this kind of thing. But we rode donkeys up the hill instead of taking the cable car. It was hard to tell if they were abused, but they certainly weren't treated like kings. Um, my donkey kept trying to run me into a wall in an attempt to take the easiest route for themselves, so clearly don't love their job. Ciao! Oh, hey there. Hi. How are you? There's cuties over there. There's cuties over there. We're in Cute City. Did you buy stuff? No. No. But it was just nice. We just like stopped at all these different places. We're just taking photos for everyone else. Mm -hmm. they'd... Baby? What? We thought you were leaving. Why did you just do a slut drop? <laughs> There's a lot of abandoned buildings around. Like I would imagine that it's pretty damn expensive to build on the top of a cliff face in the middle of the ocean. So people buy land and never finish using it. <laughs> this absolute mad lad of a woman chipped her tooth, her two five, flew out of her mouth in an attempt to open my bottle of cider. I did not ask her to do that. In fact, I asked her to stop. We caught the ferry back to Athens and we had one night in a hotel there all together and then the tour was basically over. Like I think we got a free breakfast in the morning and then it was done. So I had an extra night back at Athens Studio Hostel and I spent this day at the Acropolis and the Acropolis Museum. This is the theater. This staircase is called the Propylae. It was an, like an entryway. It had two different halls on either side of it and they would hang massive banners. That is the Erechtheon and the women on the porch are called Caryatids. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Life size. Why did I think that they would be like massive, massive women? They literally like that. That is the Parthenon. It's an optical illusion because they're actually all on a curve, but from a distance, whatever angle you stand at, the pillars look straight, which is a marvel of engineering. From here, you can see perfectly the Oropagus Hill that we originally stood on at the start of the tour. Then I went to the Acropolis Museum, where all the statues and friezes that used to be at the Acropolis are being preserved safely. It's a beautiful building, so close to my hostel, and a lot of what belongs in this museum has been stolen by Lord Elgin and is living in the British Museum and has yet to be returned. I'm definitely pro bring the statues home and put them where they belong. Uh, speaking of, the next day I flew home to Brisbane. Thank you so much for going on this journey with me. Watching all this footage back has made me want to go to Greece so badly. <laughs> I'm just constantly dreaming of Europe. But in the meantime, I have footage from Spain and Portugal that I am going to be editing in a similar fashion. Thank you so much for joining me. Please subscribe, give it a like, send it to your ma. I'll see you in the next one.